Hello, Fight fans. This is Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock, and on today's show, John Ramby and Robin Black and myself are going to discuss a busy weekend across the entire combat sports calendar as Manny Pacquiao returned to action in Macau, Glory presented their one-night lightweight tournament, and John Jones is seeking a big fight with another champion. New York City played host to Glory 12 on Saturday night from the theater adjacent to Madison Square Garden. It was the night of Andy Riesti who stormed past Giorgio Petrosian and Robin Van Roosmalen en route to winning the one night lightweight tournament. It was Petrosian's first loss since 2007 as he was a favorite going into the night. The main event featured another surprise as Wayne Barrett took a decision victory over recent middleweight tournament winner Joe Schilling with all of the action airing here on Fight Network. Manny Pacquiao made his return to the ring on Saturday night after 350 days of inactivity since his knockout loss to Juan Manuel Marquez last December. Pacquiao returned to form, picking apart Brandon Rios for 12 rounds and earning an easy unanimous decision in this welterweight contest and ends Pacquiao's two-fight losing skid to Marquez and prior to that his controversial decision loss to Timothy Bradley. And UFC light heavyweight champion John Jones was in Toronto over the past weekend at the Gentlemen's Expo, and he was asked politely about whether he would be moving weight classes. Jones said he will definitely be making the permanent move to heavyweight at some point and said he wants to fight Cain Velasquez even within the next year if possible, as that would be a super fight between the heavyweight and light heavyweight champions. All right, guys, I'm very curious about this Gentleman's Expo. You two fine gentlemen were at this event on the weekend. Uh, what was this deal going on? Uh, there's a bunch of free beer, a bunch of free whiskey, Firas Hobby there, John Jones there, the dudes from the Lion, from the Dragon's Den. Uh, however, I did run into an actual gentleman. He was in a three-piece suit, the woman who was in a gown, and he was very disappointed yeah. <laughs> with what was uh, what, what transpired. There should have been a dress code for this deal. I, yeah. I was a touch disappointed, too. I went there looking for a velvet smoking jacket. I really thought I have this nice, comfortable room in my tiny apartment with cool stuff from around the world, and I thought if I had a nice smoking jacket to sit in there with a pipe, it'd be great. No smoking jackets. Well, John Jones and Firas Zahabi were there. You guys got to chat with both of them. Uh, tell us just a bit about uh, kind of what you took away just uh, speaking with John Jones and this idea he's throwing out now of not just heavyweight, but specifically looking at Cain Velasquez. He's looking for uh, some big pay-per-view dollars in 2014. Yeah, it's true, but he, I had a chance to talk to him, like you said, and he's focused on each fight, each individual fight. So number one, he knows that Glover Teixeira is next, so he's got to be ready for that. But he still knows that Daniel Cormier and the rematch with Alexander Gustafsson could be waiting in the wings. So he's anticipating those matchups. But right now, he's got to focus on, on Teixeira because he said, right now, if you're not focused on the task at hand, that's when things go south. The thing I think people don't know about John Jones, we know he's got these genetic gifts and we know how skilled he is, is how smart the guy is. And it's not just smart in, in the cage, but he's starting to really understand his career. He's looking at guys like Anderson Silva and George St. Pierre and seeing how hard it is to be at the top level for a decade or more and how, how demanding it is. And he wants to get out at 30. And really, it's a smart thing. If that guy can get out at 30, rich and famous and handsome and young, and uh, you know with his body in great shape, then he'll be a success story. For sure. Ross was also talking about uh, Bellator and the UFC and the, is there a discrepancy in skill between fighters that compete in Bellator and opposed to fighters in the UFC and we saw uh, Firas in the corner of Rick Hahn on Friday night at Bellator and Rick Hahn looked absolutely devastating and he's, he just believes that these fighters are all the same because they train with uh, for, like for example Rick Hahn spends time training in Montreal at TriStar with some of the top 155 pound fighters in the Ultimate Fighting Championship as well as 170 pound fighters like George and Rory but he still believes that uh, as much as we need Bellator and we need these smaller organizations he tells his fighters the UFC obviously is the place to be because this is a business and you want to make as much money as humanly possible. As you just look right now at the 205 pound weight division, it's for a long time we had been talking about, man, this is like John Jones is on the verge of cleaning this thing out and all of a sudden you have that war with Gustafson where a lot of people want to see that rematch. Of course, the pending fight is with Glover Teixeira, Daniel Cormier is in the mix there and let's not even forget about Phil Davis. It seems that there are fights there for him and it's really going to just be a matter of this guy's body. It, you know, going up to heavyweight, I mean, 
mean, that's, it's not like a traditional just jumping up in weight. I mean, you're talking about a discrepancy here where you could be in there with dudes that are cutting down to 265. Yeah, the good thing, though, is a guy like Cain Velasquez isn't a massive no. heavyweight where like, guys like uh, Shane Carwin yeah. and Brock Lesnar or even Bigfoot Silva. So I think that John Jones Robin mentioned how intelligent this guy is. He's not just going to say, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to heavyweight. He's going to take the necessary steps to make sure that he, if he moves up to heavyweight, that he is properly sized. So through diet and through uh, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, you saw him. This yeah. is an immense dude. Like Monstrous. he's got to be 230 when he's walking around eating whatever he wants and not training hard. So I don't think it's that scary for him. But it's all a strategy. Hey, man, i got five years left. I want to make. 80 million in that time, or I want to do whatever. Certainly more money to be yeah. made yep. with the names at heavyweight yeah. uh, than 205 pounds. Glory on Saturday night. Uh, this was their second uh, their second show since getting the Spike TV deal in the U.S. Also aired here in Canada on Fight Network. The big Fight Network deal in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that's number one, yeah. and then this, this is this little network out of New York as well. But the last year, last month's show, uh, Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada, didn't do gangbuster numbers on Spike TV through the roof here on Canada, yeah. uh, by the way. But nonetheless, they, they're they presenting a very strong product, but I think it's just, it's awareness. It's people that don't know this is on. They don't know who these fighters are. Giorgio Petrosian, to people that follow it, that's it's amazing that you get to watch this guy on free TV. Are there enough people out there that they're reaching here and telling, hey, this guy's on free TV? Well, I mean, they're, they're doing a terrible job, in my opinion, because, you know, we watch Bellator, and yeah, Bellator said, uh, yeah, tune in to glory, but nobody knows who a lot of these fighters are. Not once did they say that uh, Giorgio Petrosian, one of the top pound-for-pound pound, uh, best fighters in the world, is competing in this tournament as well. People love tournaments. People love some of the best fighters out there. And, I mean, kickboxing, especially an organization like Glory, it is all about action. And I think if people are tuning into Bellator, they're going to absolutely love Glory because, uh, number one, it's just the highest level of skill. And then you get to see some interesting uh, things that happen, like Georgia Petrosian losing a tournament that he was supposed to be the favorite to win, and Andy Risty coming out, blasting him and blasting Robin Von Roosmullen. Joe Schilling, we could talk about him. I don't want to disrespect him, but there's a guy in Toronto that's beaten him twice named Simon Marcus. Yeah. So I don't know why they had him as the top uh, middleweight in the world, as well as Artem Levin also uh, beat this guy. But when you have Risty able to knock off the two top guys in the world, all of a sudden it's like when basketball ball has, you know, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird, etc. You've got real people. You just got to get people to know who they are. I would love to see Larry Bird, Magic Johnson <laughs> at Glory 18 maybe next year. <laughs> We've got more right now coming at you with Fight News Now Extra.